au Niger du fait du comportement des forces françaises sur notre territoire et de leurs complices. What the military spokesman is saying is that France attacked their national guard and in the process freed 16 prisoners. He also accused France of violating their airspace that the military transport plane A400M switched off its transponders and communication equipment which enabled it to fly undetected in their airspace. France is not denying that, they are only citing the military agreement they have with Nigerian authorities. Of course, the military junta have dissociated themselves from the agreement. They've told France to leave their country, to close down all the military bases. This show of force by France is a way of reinforcing their earlier statement that they do not recognize the military junta in Niger as a legitimate government. Whatever is going on, however France wants to pressure the military junta in Niger to get back to democracy, they should understand one thing. Many people in West Africa Francophone view France with so much anger. And this kind of show of force proves them right. If France truly released prisoners, that means what people said when the new rebel leader emerged is true because they are now recruiting to fight the military junta. And considering what the rebel leader said, that he will work with all foreign powers in his bid to retake Niger back from the military junta, this can quickly escalate to serious levels of maybe civil war. And having such war near to our doorstep in Nigeria will be very dangerous for northern Nigeria. Are they going to arm the rebels to do the work since ECOWAS have said that they are no longer considering military intervention, that they prefer diplomacy and negotiations first? By the way, ECOWAS heads of state are currently meeting in Abuja to decide on their next line of action. Since all their sanctions, border closures and all the measures they took didn't work, it didn't deter the military junta from continuing forward. They've even appointed a prime minister to oversee the affairs of the government which has been formed. So they are moving forward despite all the sanctions, all the border closures. Yes, a Nigerian committee made up of former politicians wrote the Nigerian government urging them to remove all the sanctions, all the border closures, that it is hurting the Nigerian economy more, that people are suffering, that it hit hard on their economy. This is always the situation when you sanction a country because of a military coup. It is the people that will suffer, not the military boys. They are the people in authority, they control all the revenue. So if they are corrupt, they will just squander the money and people continue to suffer. But if they are not corrupt, they can say, hey, let's use this opportunity to even cement our stay in power by giving people the good governance that politicians couldn't give to them. That's why in most cases, the sanctions don't work. In fact, the people will continue moving closer to the military boys instead of the other way around. This happened in Libya. Despite Muammar Gaddafi and the country being under sanctions, he continued to deliver good governance to his people. So the sanctions push the people closer to him instead of the other way around. That's why these economic sanctions are sometimes counterproductive. They will never affect the military guys themselves. Only the poor will suffer. This brings us to the main issue. The ultimate enemy of Nigerian people is poverty. Whatever foreign powers are doing, the United States, France and other interested parties, the ultimate enemy of the Nigerian people is poverty. The Nigerian military have taken power. They should not just hold power for holding sake. They should try to work for their people. Despite appointing a new government to take over affairs of governing the country, they should make sure that they reduce corruption. They should make sure they work for the people because if Nigerians continue being poor after a few months of their taking power, that means they are the same with the politicians they replaced. It's as simple as that. They've closed down their airspace, but they can't police that airspace. It all boils down to what? Poverty. If they had money, they should have had SAMs, fighter jets, complete radar coverage of their country to be able to police it, to be able to maintain security. Despite all the foreign military bases in the country, there is still serious insecurity. So these are the issues. The more people are lifted out of poverty, the more they become patriotic to the country. When people are hungry, they don't know where their next food will come from. They will never be patriotic. But when they see that the country is working for them, whatever you are doing, you'll be earning a good living, you'll be having good savings for the future. You will give your complete loyalty to your country. That's how it works. So poverty is the main issue, is the main enemy of Nigerians. The military people in power now should deal with poverty, make sure their people are lifted out of poverty, make sure there are jobs, make sure they find alternative markets for their uranium and gold. Yes, they've stopped exporting all these to France. <laughs> it's more than to build. The military junta in Niger should pick their fight very intelligently. They can't fight everyone and win. Of course, it seems like they are doing it. Going by the negotiations they had with the United States, it seems that they will keep their military base. They only want France out, which is why the United States is no longer pressing for the return of the former president, Bazoum. They know it will be hard anyway for him to return because these are military boys, they don't care. Abu Draman Chiani refused to meet the ECOWAS envoy just to show his grievances that they can't threaten a military invasion of Niger and place sanctions on Niger and come back and want to negotiate. Negotiate for what? 
that he met the former Nigerian Central Bank Governor and former Emir of Kano. Yes, I came to brief him on the details of my discussion with the leaders of the uh, um, of Niger. Would you say your your intervention was uh, positive, but successful? Interventions are ongoing, and we will continue to do our best to bring the two parties together to improve understanding. This is a time for public diplomacy. It's not a matter that we leave to governments. All Nigerians, all Nigerians need to be involved to find a solution that works for Africa, a solution that works for Niger, that works for Nigeria, and a solution that works for humanity. So somehow it shows it's tactical. You can't completely isolate yourself. Then you will lose completely. All countries care about their own interests. They don't really care about what is going on in your country. What they care about is what they can get from it. For instance, what happened between India and Pakistan? When they were at war, the United States supported Pakistan. But today, India and United States are still friends. If their main objective is just to remove France from their country, both in their economic interests, military bases, everything concerning France, they want them to leave their country. If that's their main objective, then let them move quickly and achieve it. Once they achieve this, they should just set a timeline for return to democracy. They can also just do their bit and enter into agreement with the politicians to complete the rest. Because governance is the most important thing. They need to deliver good governance to their people. Now that they have the power, they need to use that power to better the lives of their people. France should also understand the backlash against them in Francophone West Africa. They never completely left all the countries they colonized in Africa. There are still bits and bits and bits that ties these countries to them several decades after they left Africa. Why is that? That's why people are frustrated. They are simply tired of that link. That's why you see massive support for all the recent military coups in Burkina Faso, Mali, and now in Niger. So there's simply no need for France showing off their military might in these countries. It will simply lead to their people uniting more against them. You can see how Mali and Burkina have assured Niger that they will join them in defending their country in any event that there is a military intervention. So France insisting that they will not leave Niger will only lead to the people uniting more against them. A military coup is only illegal when it is not successful. If there is a military push and it is resisted, then it becomes illegal. If the people are caught, maybe they will most likely face the capital punishment. But when they succeed, it becomes a revolution. There was a revolution in France. That revolution gave rise to the modern France of today. So many people might not like what is going on in Niger today, but they are busy consolidating power. They are the authority in charge. So if they say they don't want you here, they have the power to say that because they are the authority in charge. Besides, the military junta in Mali ordered France to withdraw their troops last year. Why didn't they tell them they don't recognize them? Why the double standard? Why is Niger different? These are the reasons people are worried. People are just tired. What are they doing in Niger? Is there anything different in Niger? The military junta in Mali withdrew from all the military pacts they signed with France. Why didn't France contest it like they are contesting the one of Niger? These are the issues. They feel you want to lord it over them. That you want to decide how they will run their own country. That you don't have the right. That they are a sovereign country. That is the angle they are coming from. They are not even talking about any other thing. They are just simply saying, allow us to run our country our own way. Don't be in your country in faraway Europe and be dictating how we will run our country in West Africa. Yeah, we are talking about the latest commitment to democracy, human rights, and the well-being of the people of Niger. It is crucial that we prioritize diplomatic negotiations and that of us to 